No doubt about it. It is Tuesday. Welcome. And it's a big day. We got a we got a packed show today. It is a full show, and you yeah. and you brought your Apple Boy on. So yeah, your Apple Boy T-shirt. Yeah, yeah. We were uh, what was it? Gosh, probably a month or two ago, we were going through high rolls mm-hmm. in Mexico. near Cloud Croft. Near for Cloud those Croft. Want to yep, know. yep. Yeah. And we went to the legendary Apple Barn. Yeah, so good. Yeah, yeah. We it were told really to go there to get an apple or cherry slushy, so we stopped with yep. the girls, and I, along with the slushy. <laughs> I think we spent, I don't even know how much time and money in that place. Yeah. It is a trap, but it's a great trap. It's oh, it's a, fantastic. It's a great little roadside Oh, it's stopover. There's so much cool stuff there. And is when you campaign across the state, it's one of those iconic landmarks you always stop in. Yeah, it's really cool. And, it's and very then, cool. And they, this is their logo, the Apple Boy. Yep. And it, it's huge at the store. Right. Yeah. There's a the Apple Boy is outside the building. There, there he is. Yeah, he's huge. Yeah. You look at him. I mean, like, gosh, he's got a whole... You know, pouch full of apples, and he's—is <laughs> he creepy? No, I think he's awesome. No, I think he's awesome too. Yeah. I think he's so cool. So I'm glad that you got the shirt on today. And um, he has a little bit of a a, a, a Bob's Big Boy look, huh? Uh, from LA days, yeah. yeah. Kind of, yeah. He does look a little bit like Bob's Big Boy. Yeah, yeah. It's kind yeah. of that take where you're like, I gotta have this. Yeah. No, I get it. I, I mean, yeah. and I appreciate you giving me the an Apple Boy T-shirt too. I did. I yeah, know. I got you black. I know. I didn't know we were wearing those today, or I, ca- I guess I could have matched you. Well, that'd be best if you didn't, I think. <laughs> and I think we could maybe we not. We look like cheesy because we, yeah, we, we never dress the same. We could not wear the same clothes. That's okay, fine. That's I, I okay, think good. that that's good. Okay. So uh, so we got a lot to talk about. Yeah. A packed show. We don't have a guest today. We have a guest coming up on Thursday. Right. That is Todd Cook, the senior pastor, founding pastor of Sagebrush Church. And we're excited for that conversation. Yeah, it's a great he's, conversation. He's great. He's great. So yeah. you guys will really enjoy that one, yeah. I think. We're big fans, obviously. Very yeah. encouraging. So yeah. if you're maybe having an off day, yep. <laughs> or yep. even if you're not, like he offers a lot of light and encouragement. So I would say that one would be great. Yeah, so. exactly. No, it is. It's it's good. And, and I think it's going to be great. So now today we got a bunch of stuff we want to pack in. So we're going to yeah. be moving along pretty fast with this stuff. But I, I think you're going to find most of it pretty interesting. Right. And it starts, and it's all kind of breaking news, really. I mean, yeah. for the most part, yeah. It's yeah, no, crazy. It, I agree. And so we want to start with something we saw on Twitter last night. It came out. Now, many of you know the libs of TikTok account, and the libs of TikTok account basically talks about some of the craziness that, that's happened with with all sorts of people that are on the, especially on the extreme of the political left, M- not most mainstream Democrats. We're talking about people that are way on the edge. Well, lips of TikTok is an account that, that regularly talks about what they do. Well, they talked about New Mexico last night mm-hmm. and, and here's what she showed uh, the curator of the lips of TikTok account. It showed a survey that the kids take w- when they go through is anywhere from fourth grade on up. And when they're going and receiving any sort of school-based health center help, anything like that. Well, here it is. And this is the actual document that kids look and they take this survey. And take a look at what we highlighted for you here. Remember, we've been talking about this issue for a long time. And that is that the state of New Mexico is doing everything they can to remove parents from their kids' lives. Mm -hmm. Very simply. Take a look at the highlighted area here, and I'll read it to you if you're listening to us. It says in this survey that kids get a... The the kids go through and and they can answer all these questions. Young people like you can be seen for their sexual and mental health without permission from their parent or guardian. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what's interesting is we covered a lot of this earlier on a different episode when we were talking specific, specific, my goodness, I can't take Specific, go with it. Yeah, specific (laughs) or Pacific. We'll do the Pacific Ocean. But anyway, um, on that, trying to get that referendum back on to the um, to the uh, for the referendum on the ballot coming up in November uh, of 24 to not remove parental guidance or, you know, um, knowledge and people. And they obviously did not get enough of those signatures Right. right now to get that referendum on the ballot. Um, so they're still trying to work on that for towards next year. But the, the big controversy that came out, even some of the media that were covering it, saying there's no way that these these bills that they just signed removes parental rights. Right. And we see now clearly does. It clearly does. Like yeah. here is a they're handing this off to your kids at public schools 
yeah. here in New Mexico saying, hey, listen, no, you tell us whatever you need to tell us because your parents don't need to know about any of this. Yeah. So that's removing of the parents. Absolutely. I don't know what it, yeah. you think else that is, it's, but that's exactly what this it is. is the ultimate in gaslighting. Mm -hmm. This was people, especially state legislators and the governor saying, no, 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 nothing to see here, nothing to see here. And it says it clearly in this document from the state of New Mexico. And it's not just that. Ella, let's pull up page two from this. So we mentioned that you had it before. We, we mentioned that it says that, you know, you don't need parental, you know, permission or anything like that or parental notification. But also look what they have here. These are some of the questions, okay? Uh, which were you born as, male or female? And then which of the following best describes you, male, female, transgender, self-identity? And then which pronouns do you prefer? He, him, his, she, her, hers, they, them, their. Uh, what's the, the the next one is Zoe? Is it Zoe? Yeah, they, her, hers, whatever that is. I like I mean, this one. No pronouns, just my name. Yeah, how about just <laughs> this whole thing's ridiculous? Is there that box? Where's that yeah, box? I, know. I mean, it's just wild. Yeah. And, and you see this, and you're told time and time again, by our leaders who sit there and say, oh, no, nothing to see here, nothing to see here. And then here we go again. You got a fourth grader taking this, right? Mm -hmm. Which of the following best describes you? Heterosexual, gay or lesbian, bisexual, not sure, not listed. What are we doing? Mm -hmm. And I mean, are we even sure that this is only going as young as fourth grade? Like, we haven't gotten confirmation on that yet. Well, if you look at the age at the, on the first page, the youngest age on there is fourth grade. So grade level, if in school, fourth grade. Is the youngest age. Okay. So, so I, I don't know. I don't know like for they, sure. They've justified this like saying, okay, well, you're at least well, nine. Right. You're nine years old when you're in fourth grade. Yeah, it's just, this is ludicrous. Yeah. And, so. and, and the fact that the fact that the media is running a little cover for these guys still saying that parent, parental rights are not in, in jeopardy whatsoever. Right. Maybe you should do a little bit more investigating on this and talk to some of the teachers that are actually looking at these documents now, getting a hold of these documents, because this did go in place at the end of June for this current school year. So it is very much alive, and yeah. it's very much happening in our public school systems. And I don't know if it's every public school system or if it's just APS or, or if we have clarity on any of that yet, but we're going to still stay on top of this because I just think this is an unbelievable overreach by the school system. And, yeah. again, it's, it couldn't be more a divisive act to break up the nuclear family and to yeah. remove any sort of parental say in a child's life. So. Well, they're basically saying, hey, it's like a whisper. Mm -hmm. It's like a whisper from from the the big, you know, government, which says, hey, don't worry about your parents. Mm -hmm. If you want to come to us and, and you, you don't want to deal with them, we got you. Which, by the way, goes completely against all stranger danger that we are taught or right. we teach our kids, which is don't ever have an adult tell you that you need to keep a secret for them. Right. Right. Like there's no well, such thing is. as You're a right. secret. It's a great point. That's against parents. Right. Like that is exactly what they say. If somebody tells you that's an, a, you know, an adult or somebody that you are supposed to be trusting, whether it's a teacher or coach, a Sunday school teacher, a whatever it is, somebody that's in your life, Girl Scout leader, whatever, if they say this is a secret that we don't tell your parents about, that's like number one thing of a red flag in stranger danger. So how now are we flipping this switch on this and saying, hey, here, you know, this is just a little survey on your health, your health system, and don't worry we're not going to tell your parents and you don't have to tell your parents either it's a, it's a secret so it's a that's a that's a very very good point in in your point is perfect on this and that is that now what this is is it's an absolute attempt by the state to cleave the family in two yeah and it is dangerous and i i think we need to wake up as parents and whether you've got kids in public school or not whether your kids are raised and they're gone. I don't know what the school boards are saying about this right now. I don't know how this is just getting shoved under the rug. But again, it's these bills that were passed yep. that they came back and said, oh, you guys are all overblowing this. Because again, you're being dramatic. You're being dramatic on the right. You're being dramatic. These are not actually going to keep parents out of right. the equation. Now, what will be interesting is they also say that you won't be punished if you're going to, if you end up telling the parents, right? But they signed a bill that said you could be you fined. Could be, yeah, up to five thousand dollars. Right. So again, yeah. like I just think you guys are speaking out of both sides of your mouth. The 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 state is speaking out of both sides of their mouth. It's not lining up. 
And I need, I mean, I, I just think we should be making a very loud outcry about removing parental rights from our school age kids. Right. Period. And, I, and again, we say this every episode, but it doesn't matter whether where you fall on the political spectrum. They're trying to remove you from your kid's life. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and, and at least have the excuse to be able to say, well, eh, this is how we do it now. Mm -hmm. and, and, you, and you can't sit there and say, well, I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah, you do know because this is exactly what's happening right now. And, and if we don't deal with it and, and we don't stand up across the board here and put pressure on a state government, which is not accountable to you, they don't care. No. Like they, they don't think anything they do has consequences. So you can just keep on going. And, and so eventually we have to be able to stand up and stop this. But right now, uh, there's no indication that they're paying the price in any way, shape, or form for rolling over parents. No, right and, and, and they're going to fight it on a legal side, too. That They're not even going to let this get on the referendum in 2024, even if the signatures are um, granted. Like, I do think this is going to be a major legal battle that that uh, people like new, um, NMFAM.org, that organization is really spearheading a lot of these petitions. Yeah. So if you want more active information on this, updated information on this, we're trying to stay on top of it as best we can, but please just check out those yeah. websites. Hopefully, hopefully our local media will start rising up and maybe what? <laughs> looking into what? this because they're, they're not like, doing it yet. Local so. media is like... <laughs> Well, wow. sadly, that is <laughs> like, that is very sadly true. So oh, it's just, if you're I, a parent and you've got a please. school in a in the public school system yep. coming in this year, be prepared because your kid's going to get this questionnaire right. if they it's show up at the nurse's office. It's not appropriate. It is yeah. completely and totally inappropriate. All right. So uh, we now know. So let's we're going to you got a few stories here on Big Joe. I know. Uncle Old Joe's coming Joe. to town. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Coming he's to New Mexico. To wow. Are he we is. all shocked by this? I'm totally shocked. Well, by this. he uh, next week he's coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to talk about all the great things that he's not doing. The Inflation Reduction Act is done. Oh, like, the Inflation yes, Reduction Act. Yes. Yeah. That's and, driven our inflation prices up through the roof. But right, anyway, yeah. Correct. Right. Is he going to say that? Well, I don't know. I mean, at this point, <laughs> he's, he's doing like a three, a three stop deal. It'll be in New Mexico. Hopefully he won't nod off here like he does in this video as you're seeing or right here. Or falls on the stairs out. on the chair. On well, the it's just, down. look, this is, it, everything is falling in on him mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, Hunter and that whole thing. And, you know, that finally this past weekend, he admits he has a seventh grandchild. Oh, I finally. Know. Yeah. And and really with the Hunter thing, what you see more and more is, you know, everybody used to say, you know, Hunter's doing all these things and Joe's just kind of the... You know, the stately Innocent, old grandpa yeah. who's just trying to help. Clearly not. No. Joe's Joe's in on the grift, if not running the grift. Mm -hmm. And so this is collapsing on him. I firmly believe that. I can't believe he hasn't actually been arrested for treason yet. That, that like, <laughs> shocks me. Well, I'm you. serious. Like, you're getting, you're getting foreign aid money. You're getting foreign money that's foreign coming money. in. And we're just all supposed to not talk about it. We're not. We're supposed to look the other way. Right. And I don't know how anybody is. I, I mean, I guess I'm hoping that media starts to really cover this more. Right. Like I don't know what their goal is well, in saying I'm going to protect us in a situation that puts us in massive security risk as a country um, when we have our own president. Um, selling things, basically but, yeah. selling himself, selling access to himself yep. and his judgment calls for money. Right. And to, uh, let's see, what is it? Monday, uh, Hunter Biden's business partner uh, went in front of Congress and talked about all of this. This is horrendous stuff. But didn't like the DOJ try to arrest him first? Well, they didn't or try to, trying, or so there's some, there's some debate on that. The DOJ basically, this guy's got to go to jail. The guy who was working with Hunter, he's going to jail. Right. But um, so this shows you some of what's going on here. But but what he did was is they sent him a letter saying basically you have to re, you know we have to start the process of getting you into jail. So there's some there's some gray area there on whether that was you know going to happen, and they were trying to stop him from testifying. But he did end up testifying, and it was not good, clearly. And then beyond that, even, when you look at the whole scheme of, of where things are right now, this has become very ugly in, in the respect that, that you have money going into the Biden family and you have people finally starting to talk about it. But the mainstream media still wants to – they're doing everything they can to ignore no, it. No, they're just doing Trump, 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 Trump. Well, no, I agree. Like, let me just talk about how many laws Trump's bro broken – and we're gonna put Trump in jail and Trump, Trump, Trump. Like literally, it's like it's kind of a crazy well, yeah. scheme that that they're just look over here and don't pay attention to what's happening with our president and all the illegal activity that he's been involved with. And so let's focus our attention once again on January sixth and Donald Trump. Like, right. Well, yeah, and and I think it's also 
the part of this too is this is why it's important to win elections because it's the House Oversight Committee that has brought all this out. And, and there's going to be an impeachment inquiry. There is, and there should be. Like, this is how it works. When you're taking money from outside governments for access, like, that's impeachable. Like, that's real. And there should be an impeachment inquiry. That's going to broaden Congress's powers to go after and get the information necessary to figure out what happened here. That's where we're going. And we should be going there. And, and it shouldn't be taken lightly. And it, we shouldn't barrel through it quickly. Remember, the whole Trump impeachment stuff, Pelosi went. She For a long time, she didn't want to do it, right? She mm -hmm. didn't want to go through this because she knew it would be a very partisan endeavor. And then, then when they did, they went really fast and everything else. And it's a mess. But this has to be dealt with in an impeachment sense. And it will be, it looks like. But it's so an he, ugly situation. And so he's coming to New Mexico to what? Like, look at this squirrel over here. It's bright and shiny. And let's talk about EV. I mean, what's he doing? Talking well, about his green legislation and his EV plan. And well, his no, he's talking about his economic plan. Bidenomics. Are you kidding me? <sighs> yeah, you go and get a four dollar gallon of gas. You you go and go to the grocery store and spend eight bucks on a gallon of milk. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's a disaster. And the problem too is the veneer of him as this guy who is who's a stately old grandpa and is kind of a nice guy is gone. Mm -hmm. Like he's a incompetent. B, he can no longer function, and C, he's a grifter. So I, mean, I, I guess I'm confused. He's coming to New Mexico to give speeches for people to continue to vote no, for him? I don't know. I mean, well, they make a presidential visit. I mean, uh, I, you uh, know. What I do you think, like, him... he has something valuable to offer? I just think in the heat of all of this Hunter stuff, I wouldn't want that guy anywhere near my state. Well, there's no if one I running had... for re-election here right now, so they don't care. Uh, I mean, so, you know, will, will Heinrich go stand up next to him? I don't know, because he's the only one up for statewide re-election. So right. I don't know. Will Will Stansberry be there? Probably, because yeah. she just doesn't know any better. She'll stand on, you know, whatever. <laughs> but but so here's the thing that's, that's kind of scary. So I want to get into this. There's a broader thing happening here with climate policy mm -hmm. that I think is important to talk about here. Biden administration has already begun a crackdown on refrigerant for your AC units in right. your in your house, okay? So if you look back to over the past uh, year or so, they started to cut down on hydrofluorocarbons, which are the things that cool the air that comes into your house if you have air conditioning. Okay, they cut them by like 10% this past year. That has pushed prices up. So if you go and get your AC unit fixed, you know this, the prices have skyrocketed, mm -hmm. right? What they're going to do next year is cut it by 40%. The amount of hydrofluorocarbons that we have to draw from to service our AC units. So what's that going to do to a repair of, especially for a low-income family mm -hmm. who has one unit and they need it repaired, right? Right. It's going to take the cost of that and triple or quadruple it, most likely. And this is part of that grand plan, which is make it incredibly expensive and make it harder to live. Really. I mean, I'm sorry. So what is the, what's the, what's his alternative to an AC unit? In New Mexico, what am I missing here? Well, there's no alternative. He just wants to raise the price. So basically what I think they want to do is, is they want to create this thing where they create the climate issue, right? And they say, you know, we have had a very hot summer. There's no doubt. And, and I've talked about this before. We've, we've never said, you know, the climate isn't changing. I've, I've talked about that, that we are warming some. No doubt. So how do you want to deal with it? Okay. The best way to deal with it is, number one, realize that our total emissions have gone down over the past 15 years thanks to the production of natural gas. And the fact is New Mexico is a huge part of that, and we need to continue to do that. And then we have to get into the nuclear game in the respect of fusion and fission and put a tremendous amount of money behind that to create a very, very robust network of not only natural gas but nuclear power that can, that can power us going forward. Those are the big things we need to do. But what you see on the left is what they want to do. They want to make it more expensive to service that air conditioner. They want your house to be hotter. They want your stove to no longer be a natural gas stove. They want to run it off electric with, with a grid that's pretty shaky. They also want to drive up the cost of gasoline. They want to force you into an EV that you can't afford. All of the sudden, you start looking at all of these things layered on top of each other. They are trying everything they can to take the standard of living and drive it into the ground. Why? Because they want to be able to say to you, do it our way. So if, if they say, look how hot it is out there, we got to do this our way. They want to create a crisis so that you then have to rely on the government, turn to them and say, what do we do? And when they do that, they've got you because 
your kids are not going to live the life that you did. They're not. And your families and their families will feel this effect for generations to come. And this is what they're doing. And John Kerry's doing it too. So he just was overseas giving a speech. And he, I want you to just listen a little bit to what John Kerry says here and tell me if this doesn't freak you out. Just listen to what he says. Agriculture contributes about 33% of all the emissions of the world. That's how we feed uh, ourselves. Depending anyway. a little bit on how you count it, but it's anywhere from 26 to 33. And we can't get to net zero. We don't get this job done unless agriculture is front and center as part of the solution. But with a growing population on the planet, we just crossed the threshold of 8 billion fellow citizens around the world. We just crossed that in this last year. Emissions from the food system alone are projected to cause another half a degree of warming by mid-century on the current course that we are today. Okay. So what he says there, and he continues to go on saying this, basically, we're overpopulated and we, we produce too much carbon trying to feed ourselves. This guy, he's such a hypocrite and a clown. And the reason why is if there were 10 hamburgers left on the planet, John Kerry would get two of them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, he flies on private jets. He's unbelievably wealthy. Mm -hmm. Realize this. These rich environmentalists who come in and tell you not to run your air conditioner never have to live by the rules they want you to live by. When they tell you you got to buy an EV, they own $150,000 cars when it takes you three, four years to earn $150,000. They're phonies. They never live by the rules that they force you to live by. So understand when Biden says, nope, you're not getting that air conditioner fixed. When John Kerry says, yeah, I can't produce that kind of food, these guys will never have to live by these rules. It's absolutely infuriating. And then that will just drive our food prices up even higher. Yes. Right? And, and who gets hurt? Low-income families that cannot afford it. Mm -hmm. That's who these guys target. And it's infuriating to watch because as you continue to see, they're just such phonies. And so, again, if you want to really address the issue, we have to produce massive amounts of electricity that are clean. We can do that with natural gas. We can do it with nuclear. And still, the internal combustion engine is still a huge part of what we have here in New Mexico. Because 80% of the cars on the road here are trucks or SUVs. Mm -hmm. The average age of those trucks or SUVs is 14 years old. Nobody's buying a $55,000 hatchback EV. It's a joke. And this is really they're going after a way of life here, and they want to take the standard of living and drive it into the ground. And what really bothers me on this now, too, is the fact that I've talked about this before, but like we're seeing both of our U.S. senators really push this agenda really strong, this green agenda, this EVs, uh, going all EV, yeah. no gas stoves, yep. right? Like this yep. whole push is coming from our state U.S. senators, right? Yeah. And Correct. they're supposed to be representing us, yeah, and they're they not. They don't care. They don't no, care. No. So the fact that is, if you keep voting these same people in, right? Which I don't think that our listeners actually will. Right. Well, <laughs> but, yeah. But well, I, hopefully, I mean, look, hopefully, we start to broaden out, and people start to realize we're not talking about issues here. But we're our talking party. about your, yeah. We're yeah. talking about your pocketbook. Yeah. And if you think Martin Heinrich cares that he's asking you <laughs> to, you know, drive a car that's you know sixty grand, and you can fit yourself, you know, your wife in a suitcase. That's a problem. That's a problem. And, and even now, they're looking at more and more EVs, even nationwide. So we talked about Michelle trying to put 43% of all new purchases of new cars by 2027 must be EVs in New Mexico. We know this much. American automakers can't fill that gap. They can't. They don't have enough to do it. So who's going to step in and do it? China. Yep. China EVs. If you look at what's going on, Axios did an interesting article on this last week that the, the Chinese automakers are getting ready to come to the U.S. with cheap EVs. Mm -hmm. Why? They have the best access to the lithium and all the rare earth minerals necessary. And they're going to come in here and destroy our auto market. Right. Now, Trump put a 27 percent tariff on their cars, which was smart. He needed to do that. and It was the right thing to do because if he doesn't. They're going to come in here and undercut prices across the board, and it could be devastating to our auto industry. Right. But if you're going to reach these numbers they want to reach, they're going to end up going to China to do it. And that's just the exact opposite direction that we should be heading in. And if you look at some of these Chinese EVs, 
and, and there's video of them and, you know, all over. I have to go on the Internet. You can see plenty of video of these Chinese EVs. Uh, you know, how good are they? Are they not? I don't know. But they've rolled out a few that are like 10 grand, 10 grand for a new EV. Right. And you're like, oh, my gosh, what is going on here? You know, again, some okay, of them are but crazy. Can you look at it. I mean, you can't even put anybody in there. Well, no, but there's there's a bunch of different ones. <laughs> oh there are a bunch gosh. of different ones. I know. We're all going to be running in a smart car pretty soon. Well, yeah. I, yeah, I know that's the argument, really. Right. If you want one that's affordable or tiny. But overall, I think this is one of those things that are we really going to open the door? For China to come in here and destroy our auto market, and, right. and and I give Trump credit for saying, "Wait a minute, no, 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 you're gonna you're gonna pay a tariff on these things because you're not coming in to undercut our our U.S. automakers." So this is just all of this wraps in together, that, or I think we have such a dangerous movement right now from people that do not have the best interests, especially low income families, in mind. So when you tell them. It's going to cost a ton of money to fix your air conditioner because we are artificially pulling back the supply of coolant. It's going to cost you a ton to get a car because we're going to force you to get an EV. We're going to force you to make sure that, that your prices for gasoline go through the roof. We're going to pull more food production off the table, which is going to raise the price of food. We're seeing all of this, and the result ends up being that families pay the price and you will not drop the temperature even a single scintilla of a degree doing it that way. Mm -mm. So it's ridiculous. Well, and another thing, I this is not actually in our show, uh, show notes, but I saw this this morning that was on 1440, and it came out. It's a malware hunt. It says, mm -hmm. uh, speaking of China, and the fact that we're what? We're going to just open our doors to China right now and say, come on in, bring your cheap cars. We'll buy them from you. We'll right. go ahead and hurt our own auto, auto industry. So this came out. It says the Biden administration is actively searching for malware it believes was secretly installed by China in systems controlling the United States power grids, water infrastructure and more, according to reports over this particular weekend. Yeah. Concerns about China's ability to attack critical U.S. infrastructure have increased in recent years. And the 2023 annual threat assessment from the director of national intelligence said China, quote, almost certainly has the capability to disrupt key U.S. systems. I mean, I'm sorry, but why are we even talking to China and trying to open a door to China to do anything here and to give them more income? I, I'm so against this. I can't even like they're a major threat. And I don't know how anybody's not seeing that. Yeah. I mean, and look, there are, our, our economies are intertwined to some degree. They are. I mean, there's no doubt they provide a lot of things that that we need for for, you know, to, to produce goods. They do. And, and because they've been smart in the way they've handled that over time. But you're right. I mean, that especially with covid, we saw that, look, there needs to be a separation and we, we need to fortify supply lines outside of China. And this clearly shows what a danger China is. Yeah, the spy balloon. So everything. I mean, China is 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 a is a very significant foe in all of this. And if we don't do something, and by opening our doors more and more to China, you're right. It's a it's right a and creating issue. the need supposedly to have the doors to be open to China because right. we're going to force you well, force these cars down your throat, and you can't afford the American made versions. So. Here you go. We've got this other solution. We're going to be in bed with China. We'll welcome them over with welcome arms. Right. I mean, I'm well, just that's why the whole so Biden thing, up. and that's where the Biden thing starts to get really shaky when you look at how much money his family directly took from China. Right. That's why you start going, oh, is there something what up is here? Happening? Right. Right. Yeah. But the other thing we see in media is they continue to run cover for him in in a in a staggering way. So CNN over the weekend, mm -hmm. did you see this? So CNN, yeah. Scott Jennings is a, a Republican strategist. He occasionally uh, goes on CNN, and he had a little moment on CNN. This was just after Biden finally acknowledged his seventh grandchild, which was just a horrific turn of events here, right? I mean, it's just meaning that he ignored her for four years, right? right. So finally now he admits that she exists. Right, because I'm sure, you know, you're running for reelect. That doesn't sound so good for you, that oh. you're ignoring your one of your grandkids. You you know it was an ugly deal when they pulled this. So listen to what Scott Jennings said on <laughs> CNN, and just look at listen to how they tried to run cover for Biden here. The president has made being a family man yeah. a central part of his political identity. Uh it's not Republicans, with all due respect, who made Hunter Biden into a complete scumbag on this and other issues. Right. The, the ignoring his own daughter for four years and the president of the United States hanging up a stocking for the dog I mean, the and not for his seventh grandchild. Okay, look, okay. Can all, we, can also comes have, we can also have we, sympathy for people who are struggling with addiction. Let's right. keep this conversation <laughs> respectful. I, 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 listen, 
I, I totally agree. And you know where I'm from? A lot of families deal with addiction. And you know who ends up picking up the pieces? The grandparents. And in this case, the grandparents would not acknowledge this little girl. It is offensive. But the bottom line is... But they have now. The poll... <laughs> Oh, what a hero. The polling must have been yeah, brutal. Just the polling sure must have been the brutal. Fact, Look at that. I mean, just... Yeah, just uh, running interference. Oh, no, no, I no, mean, no, no, no. He, he, did, he acknowledged it. Uh, there's addiction. Stop with the addiction garbage with Hunter Biden. I know. This guy's a scumball. So's Joe. Mm -hmm. They're taking money and enriching their family at the expense of the United States. Okay, so stop with all of this. Mm -hmm. But these people still get up there and do it. And they won't investigate it. They won't talk about it. And again, this hurts more and more because eventually you are going to see a situation where this guy's going to go down and we will not have had a media that had a role in it. We'll mm -hmm. have a media that, that actually worked against it, mm -hmm. which is wild when you consider what happened with Nixon. Right. Because if there was no media going after Nixon. It never would have happened. Never, nobody ever would have known. Yeah, you would nobody have had a clue, have even clueless. And now we've had a media that now just does everything they can. To make excuses. And this is, it's actually just, it's so bad for the country. That's what's so scary. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to cover things on an honest way. Yep. And, and and I think that Scott was actually dead on when he's oh, saying, absolutely. oh, the polling must have shown that yeah. you're losing favor because you look like somebody who's heartless who won't recognize your own granddaughter. Yeah. Yeah. So let's change that. We got to change that tune really, really fast and yep. make you look like your grandfather here. I, I guarantee you there'll be a photo op of him and this granddaughter within a couple of weeks. Yeah. And yeah. think about this too. And, and Ben Shapiro made this point, I think a few days ago, and that was um, na name one of Biden's granddaughters or grandsons. Can you name a single one? I can't, right? Oh, no. Okay. This girl's name is Navy Joan. Like, we all know her name, mm -hmm. right? And so by doing what he did, by being a, the scumball that he is, Joe and Hunter, we actually, everybody knows her name. Yeah. And nobody knows any of the other kid's name. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's it's a fair point. And so we'll see. And, and, you know, as Biden sits there, not really campaigning for president, you know, because he can't. <laughs> No, and right? he's no, because he's on the beach. He's busy on the beach oh, with his shirt right. off. Did and his, you see that? His hat turned around and his glasses. You see that on. picture of Biden and on I'm, the beach? And I'm like, how many vacation days does Biden get? Because he's making the presidency look like a cake. This walk. is a good gig, yeah. I mean, he's on vacation more than he's in the yeah. office now. Oh, I know. Three hundred and some odd days on vacation so far. Oh. Three hundred over three hundred days on vacation. He's been in office for how long? I, I don't know, but, I mean, you see him here. He's just out working. The, I mean, seriously. And then there's an, I mean, he's just kind of kicking back. That, by the way, Ella, Ella was putting up a picture. Yeah. Ella's, that was two vacations ago. That's not the most <laughs> recent vacation. There is another one. Uh, where where he was he was standing there with his hat on backwards. You're right. This yeah. was that's from yesterday. Yeah. He's out at a beach and I don't know Rehoboth or wherever in Delaware that he has his multi million dollar home mm -hmm. off his hundred and seventy thousand dollar a year salary. Right. Let me tell you that's it hard to do. Really well. It's yeah. hard to do unless of course you're at a grift where you're stealing millions. But whatever. Yeah. I mean, so this guy, you're right. I mean, this guy goes out and he spends more time on vacation. And we used to hit every. I mean, that's always been something they hit presidents on, right? Oh, yeah. Trump's out golfing. Obama's yeah. out golfing. Bush yeah. is out. You know, riding his you know four wheeler, or whatever. Yeah, and it was always kind of like, ah, eh, whatever. But this guy really, and and nobody cares because he can't do anything, right? So it's not like it matters. They're probably trying to hide him out. So they're like, oh, hey, yeah. yeah, this guy needs a mental health break because or a nap, mm. another nap. So let's just go take oh. a couple of days and nap at the beach. So. Yeah, no, that's a anyway. good call. And so while while Joe continues to vacation, mm -hmm. um, and by the way, if, keep if, count of vacation, if you are vacation days. if you are keeping count of them, you, you better be able to really, really have a pretty robust counting so he biden is will have spent 63 of 128 weekends in delaware <laughs> since he's been president unbelievable well he's making the job look real easy he at is. this point yeah, you know which... a lot of people don't run for president because they're like wait a minute this could be really hard yeah and most presidents get gray hair have you noticed that like oh. their hair turns more and more gray like obama went from dark hair to almost white hair by the end of his right. term right you saw clinton going more gray i think i mean every it's a stressful job I mean, oh, is it Bush, be? all of them. Yeah. And then Joe's like, what are you guys talking about? Yeah. You, you should have just been vacationing the I'm whole time eating, like I, me. I'm eating chocolate chocolate chip ice cream. Oh, I am <laughs> smelling small girls, and I'm on oh, the beach. Oh, my <laughs> Lord. We're killing this guy. Okay. All right. All right. Let's move on. So but... the guys who want to replace him? Yeah. Uh, DeSantis as continues the reset. Right. So he la late last week started engaging, I think, in tougher media 
um, in the tougher media uh, started with Megan Kelly, right. who, who does a good job. She's a great interviewer, and she'll she puts her feet to the fire. Like I don't care what candidate you are, she'll stick well, her feet to the fire. Well, she considers herself an independent, uh, right lean, uh, right leaning independent. Right. That's how she classifies herself. Well, so yeah, just give you a little listen to this. She kind of Megan kind of got um, a little spicy. She they get yeah. yeah, and I think she pressed him hard on the fact that you know he had this this battle with um, with Disney. Over, you know, Disney had their own, basically their own governmental structure within the state of Florida, you know, and, and really got to do whatever they wanted to do. And then he ended up tangling with Disney over a lot of these issues as far as, you know, kind of was this retribution, right. uh, you know, going after Disney because Disney took stands on bills like trying to, you know, introduce sex education to kids who are way too young for it. Mm -hmm. And Disney got on board with that, of course, because right. they thought that would be a smart idea. So is is this is this is uh, Governor DeSantis sort of defending that push by mm -hmm. indulging in social activism that has caused a huge problem for their company and their and their stock price has gone down. Well, our pension fund in Florida holds uh, Anheuser-Busch InBev stock. So it's actually hurt teachers, it's hurt cops, it hurts firefighters who depend on that pension fund. And so- but Didn't you support the boycott against them? No, I did, but that's just as a personal thing. But I mean, we didn't have like the-, the Okay, the so this is a good example. So Megan's gonna go back and forth with him, pushing him pretty hard on stuff mm -hmm. and doing a good job. And, and I think what's interesting about it is that he did well, he did just fine. And so to me, I think this is where you, if you're DeSantis now going forward, Get in any room you can and start swinging. Yeah. Because he is somebody who I think is better when he's in an adversarial situation. Like, he's just fine with that. Right. And he can actually back himself up really yeah. well. Like, he's he talks about why he's doing things the way he's doing them. Um, they, I, I've heard uh, reviews on this particular interview with Megyn Kelly that basically he needs to be doing some more of these long format interviews yeah. with, with some of the media out there. So people actually get an idea of who the guy is. And he's getting some really good help. Yeah. So uh, Politico last week said he's brought in uh, an expert here. DeSantis may not be capable of a reset, says Politico, but the first GOP primary debate offers his best chance to shift the narrative, as he would call it. He's brought in Republican strategist and longtime debate prep Svengali, Brett O'Donnell, to help ahead of the August 23rd forum. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Brett was on episode five of ours. Episode eight. Right. Episode eight. <laughs> oh, really? It yes, was eight, huh? It's eight. Yeah. Okay, very good, babe. Thanks. Uh, so, and Brett, uh, we worked with him. Yeah. Uh, he was well, one of my did. debate coaches. You, you worked with him, yeah. Yeah, and he was great. Yeah. And so we had him on. We'll have him on again, I think. Yeah, but you guys should listen to him. If you're interested in, yes. like, if you're trying to see, like, okay, what is DeSantis bringing this guy in? Like, is this going to really help DeSantis? Is it not? If you're really interested in the debate part of it, which we are, like, we both love the debate process. Yeah. Um, and I can't wait. We're going to have, like, a, like a showing like a screening of the debate night at right, our house because right. it's we love this kind of thing um brett is one is the best he's yeah. known as the best debate coach prepper in the in like worldwide like yeah. he's got a global presence right. yeah he is and so the Works fact that he brings him in i mean he's fascinating if yeah. you're interested in that definitely listen to episode eight of our podcast <laughs> <Got it. Episode laughs> uh, that's eight. where he was on and he offered some really good insight on how it works and what he's looking at and all that kind of stuff so yeah and yeah. brett is trying to get governor DeSantis ready in case too that that trump gets into this so the question becomes twofold does trump show up at the debate and kellyanne conway thinks she may, you know, she's like, eh, he may actually show up. So let's listen to what Kellyanne Conway says about Trump potentially showing up. Now, he may not announce this way ahead of time. No, I think, I think in fact, he probably won't because my guess is he's probably wanting to kind of throw people off, yep. right? That would be my guess is like, let's have people, you know, just the unknown, yeah. right? And I think that's a strategy. It's a showman. Yeah. You got to be the showman. Yeah, right? you want to be like all that. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, that's my guess. But he's kind of like the TV personality guy that was going to just shock everybody. Uh, TV personalities. Those guys are stupid. <laughs> all right. Let's go ahead and listen to what uh, Kelly and Conway says. I've discussed it with him. I will tell you this. Uh, on the one hand, he's acting like a front runner. He's way ahead. What does he have to gain by going in the other hand? That's a natural habitat for him. It helped him in that first Fox News debate on August 6, 2015 in Cleveland, Martha. Um, he got center stage. He never lost it, became the nominee and indeed the president. Um, also, I, I think President Trump will keep everybody in suspense. And if I were you, I'd keep that, that center podium warm. Um, <laughs> a bit more. 
keep it warm. Yeah. Now, is yeah. she working with him currently? You know what? I don't know. I sure, I'm sure. i sure she has some involvement. I mean, I, 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 I listened to an interview with her know. several months ago, and they said if she if he actually becomes president again, would you work with him again? And she said she absolutely yeah. would. Yeah. So I just don't know if she's working with him behind the scenes. But, okay, so, you know, you know Brett. Right. You worked with him. What do you think he's going to tell DeSantis? Like, what's your two cents on, like, what's the best advice that he's going to give DeSantis in a debate situation? I think he's going to tell him not to eat the cheese, meaning – don't get sucked into the insult game with Trump, right? Don't try to don't try to go back and forth. Trump does what Trump does. DeSantis has to be a different animal altogether. And so I don't know, not having worked with Governor DeSantis in that realm of how good a debater is he and everything else. What Brett usually, what he told me, for example, was we you have certain issues you know you're going to hit on, right? And and you have and there's always a there's a Basically, when you're in the middle of one of these debates, there's a formula, right? And usually it is uh, talk about what you're going to do, make it a three quick points about what you're going to do, pivot and hit your opponent. That's what it is every time, right? And so answer the question you want to answer, not the one that's asked. Mm -hmm. And then make sure you get the point out that you need to get out. So you do have to address the question. But I think what, what Brett... O'Donnell is likely to tell Ron DeSantis is Trump's going to try to throw you off your game. He's going to throw all sorts of things at you. We want to hit Trump at X, Y, and Z on this issue. So you lay out your plan and boom, 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 you hit him. Hmm. And then there are always those memorable moments that he always wants you to create. He always wants you to create that moment, that, that little phrase, which they will have practiced. If they're smart, and I, and I know he is, they'll have a couple zingers. Mm -hmm. And they know the topics. You know what I mean? Like, so if it's on, it's on the wall or whatever, it's on COVID or whatever, they'll have a little zinger about Fauci. Yeah. They'll have a little zinger about not getting enough of the wall done. They'll have the zingers. They'll have things they have to get out. And then they'll have plans that he'll want to do. It's a, it's a fairly simple thing, but you got to be able to think on your feet too. Right. Ultimately, at the end of the day, Brett can give you the all the details. You need. Yeah, Absolutely. The he can give you, you every game plan you need. Mm -hmm. He's like a great coach. But if when the time comes and it's fourth down and five, you got you to gotta hit that pass over the middle for six yards to get a first down. And that's where it's on DeSantis, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to be on DeSantis. But I will say that if there's anyone who can get DeSantis harnessed and, and headed in the right direction, it'll be Brett. And I think they'll do that thing. I think what they're going to touch on is a, a, their plan, a hit on Trump and a couple of zingers. Hmm. And it's that simple. You go after it that way if Trump shows up. Trump doesn't show up, you unload on him for not being there. Right. You know? And right. I mean, you just unload on him. But I don't know if Trump's going to be able to help himself. I, I think he may show up. I'm telling you, Trump's going to be there. Yeah, he Trump might. doesn't know how to not be there. So yeah, no, I, I, and I... And hey, that's one of the more... I think that's one of his more endearing qualities. Like, get out there and do it. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see. And, and But you've seen the ads, too, now. He's got a new ad out. You're looking at me like, should I'm we talk about it? <laughs> you you had this look on your face. Like, you no, looked at me, you're no, like, I, um, you give me this one, you're like, well, like, you gave me nothing. It was like a poker match. Like, you looked at me like, does he have a couple aces? Me? He, that's yeah. Me? Yeah. Well, that's because you didn't tell me about this one. So, oh, I didn't? No, oh, the Trump ad? No, this is what you do. Oh. When we, when, just so everybody knows, like, I have ideas on the show. Mark has ideas about the show. Yeah. We kind of throw them together, but he, yeah. he does the organization of the order of the show. And he changes yeah. the order whenever he wants to, in the middle of the show, whatever. Poor Ella's back there going, Dad, let's change the order. You're changing the order. Okay, so, how about, do you want to hear the, the a little sure. bit of the new Trump ad? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. okay, all right, here we go. What do you call someone this week? Someone caught in a bribery scandal that made them millions, complicit in a government cover-up, and uses your government to get special deals for his family? You call them Joe Biden. And acting just like a corrupt third world dictator, Biden has unleashed a cadre of unscrupulous government bureaucrats he controls to act like rabid wolves and attack his greatest threat. Launching one of the greatest witch hunts in history. But Biden's underestimated the intelligence of voters. And Trump's support is growing even stronger. As hardworking Americans come together in huge numbers to stand with the one person they know has their backs and will fight to make America great. There you go. Yeah. So it's, you know, that's pretty clearly laying things out. If that ends up being the choice, 
that's what those ads are going to look like back and forth. It's going to be, you know, Trump going after Biden for all his issues and mm-hmm. then Biden going right back and hoping that the electorate has already decided on Trump. Well, and it's interesting because he's like, okay, let me go ahead and fill this ad too with a lot of Joe Biden falling up the stairs. Yeah. Like just Well, it's part of it. I it understand. I get it. it, but it's like, holy cow, like this is what we're gonna see. Yeah. So okay. it's gonna get ugly. Yep. That's what's which we're not shocked about that. Yeah. So uh, my vote is that or my my guess is if I'm putting money down, Trump shows up to the debate. Okay. So uh, let's have a watch party. I'm very excited about this. Yeah. We'll talk more about that as we get a little bit closer. We will. So. We may live stream this thing too. Let's see what happens. Okay. We'll do that. Yeah. So okay. You're oh, about- you mean like we're gonna play pundit? Like we're gonna be like, hey, maybe. we're actually maybe we will because this is what we do. Yeah, like we are, yeah, maybe we will. We are. We'll uh, we have some. We have some strong opinions in the Ron yeah. Well, family. we may add a few so- people in here. Be kind of a fun. Oh, that would fun be fun. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, you're going to go to UNM, take their latest uh, oh, class? Oh, I can't wait to read this. This is a great new class they're offering everybody. Yeah, another uh, thing that kind of took off on Twitter um, over the past uh, couple of days or so, and it's a new class at UNM. Yeah, and it's called Critical Whiteness Studies, everybody. And in the subject of what you're going to actually be learning about, it says we will learn about whiteness as an ideology of supremacy and domination that functions in part by labeling what white people do think and act as superior and normative. So, yeah, this sounds like something that, I mean, I can't wait. I can't wait to see how many. Just, this is just. Uh, this is what. Divisive, ridiculous. It's focusing on whiteness in relation to colonialism, education context, and language practices. Yeah. Give me a break, which I know yeah. I say all the time, but seriously, how did they get funded for this? Who's the teacher? And what kid is signing up for you this mean, class? How do they get funded? This is what they do. Oh, I like, know. They love this. I know. I can't. W- I mean, we should try to send somebody in undercover yeah. uh, to take the class. Yeah, we should go take it. <laughs> Just sit in there. Can you imagine? The you like, should oh. sit in the front row. Yeah, that I'm sure they yeah, love they seeing love me. Love you. Yeah. It, it, it is. It, it and we wonder why we seem to live in uh, two different universes. Mm-hmm. And and it is because when kids, especially, and I call them kids, when young adults are educated from such an early age and whether it be through grade school high school but really college now and 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 they're they're given a set of facts and we wonder why people especially young people don't don't like their country Mm -hmm. because if you start teaching people that there is a structure in place that will ensure their failure or uh, ensure advantage one group over another without any effort of your own that's not true and it's garbage but yet this is what they want to perpetuate. They want to perpetuate a, you cannot possibly succeed unless the government decides it's going to help you. Mm-hmm. That's what they want. And they want people to be like, well, government's got to solve this. This is so bad. This, this, this white supremacy is so bad in the country that if the government doesn't step in and help me, I have no chance of success. They constantly tell minority communities, you can't be successful. Mm-hmm. You can't, when that is not true. And many people in these minority communities understand that through hard work in a country that is still evolving and getting better, that you can make it. You can do well, but not this. Oh, I wonder. I can't believe that Kamala didn't fly out here to talk about this particular curriculum like she flew to Jacksonville last week to talk about their curriculum down there. Like she's just – this is just – Yep. This has got to be a joke. Yeah, it, it, but it isn't, unfortunately. And and so if there's anybody out there that wants to go ahead and volunteer yes. and is going to take this class and wants to report back to us on it, yeah. please we'll get pay, in touch with we'll us. We'll pay the, the, the podcast. will pay for you to take the class. <laughs> yeah. We'll pay that. We'll pay the registration. fee. Yeah. Get in there. We get, need regular reports, but we'll need a daily or even weekly debrief. Right. And, and yeah. you contact us. You can find us on our website. No doubt about it. Uh, podcast.com yeah. info it no doubt about it yeah. send it in yeah send us a, a yeah, little yeah if you want to go we'll we'll pay for it yeah no doubt and then you have to report back okay. so I, I can't wait to see what this is but okay. yeah All anyway right. a couple more things to wrap up uh number one we now have someone who steps up and says we got alien bodies we got alien bodies yeah i saw this okay so uh nancy mace was uh questioning um grush who is one of the one of the guys who says look we got major uap action here ufo action Mm -hmm. we should be paying attention to this i want you to listen to this exchange because there's little there are grays we got grays laying somewhere we got little gray bodies (laughs) hold on check this out intelligence extraterrestrials something i can't discuss in public setting 
Um, okay, I can't ask when you think this occurred. <laughs> um, if you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. Um, were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. And was this documentary evidence, this video, photos, eyewitness, like how would that be determined? The specific documentation I would have to talk okay. to Skip about. There it is. Biological, non-human biological. That's what he calls it. That they've Biologics, discovered. Yeah. Biologics yeah. that they've found. So, yeah. okay, so we're going to we keep. Em. We got them. Yeah, we got some. Okay. But the thought process that that this is kind of a cute, oh my gosh, look at the little big eyes on them and look how cute they are. Yeah, no. That could be, we, we, I think we're starting to realize that may not be the case. And one of the people talking about this is George Knapp. So he's a reporter with, I think it's uh, KLAS in, in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. He's a legend on this. And this was a tweet that, that I want to to read you what George Knapp said because this is a letter he wrote to Congress. So this is probably the foremost reporter on, on UFOs in the country. He said, Colonel Sokolov, who shared information about the alarming incident in a Russian ICBM base in the Ukraine, said this, UFOs appeared over the base, performed astonishing maneuvers in front of stunned eyewitnesses, and then somehow took control of the launch system. The missiles aimed at the US were suddenly fired up. Launch control codes were somehow entered and the base was unable to stop what could have initiated World War III. Then, just as suddenly, the UFOs disappeared and the launch control system shut down. So more and more people are saying, this is something that is a huge issue that we're not really, like, we're just issue. looking at it wrong. Mm -hmm. We're looking at it like, oh, it's cool. Mm. Well, we looked at like one of those documentaries, and I'm sorry that I didn't think about this ahead of time, but there was a documentary you and I watched, oh, a year ago, maybe 2020, something like that, we were watching, and they talked about another one of our bases here that lost all power and control, and they have nuclear, they had nuclear bombs or weapons or something mm -hmm. that they lost control of. Right. And they didn't know what was happening during that moment. And it was like this big panic. And they said that they, I, I can't remember exactly, but there was like, like they saw craft. They yep. didn't know if this was a foreign body, like from a different country yep. or whatever. But they end up saying they believed it was a UAP and that they definitely could shut down their control, meaning the U.S. control of those weapons right. and how dangerous and scary that was. And it was the same thing. They came to see if they could do it. They were able to do it. They didn't do anything else, and then they left, and they were able to have control of those weapons again. So I feel like this is now seeming like, is this, oh. you know, are there more cases of this, and is this something where they're going to take over our own? Like, it, this is just crazy that we're even having this discussion. I know, because, well, when we were kids, it was all, oh, this is not true. I don't know. You right, know right. And now it's, it's becoming very real. So we'll see. I just wonder if we're not looking at this the wrong way. I mean, we may need to be looking at this at much. Not, not that there's that much we can do, because it appears – they're so far ahead of us technologically. What are we going to do? Like, they're going to show up and, and what? They're going to take over the nuclear? We're going to be like, well, let's bring out the uh, LR4 laser. We don't have that. I don't know what that is. And I don't, I, you know, I, who knows what we've got in, 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 we're trying to back engineer some of this stuff. I don't know. It's crazy. So we'll see. And then we'll skip ahead now. We got two more things. Okay. Because okay? yeah. we kind of went a little long. But, yeah. Um, the rising power of Jesus in Hollywood. Did you see this article? I did. In I thought this was actually a great article. Yeah. On it. I mean, it's fascinating because you can tell that the guy that wrote the article um, kind of wants to find holes in this, right? right? Like he kind of wants to discount the Christian movement, quote unquote movement. He kind of wants to poke fun out of it a little bit, but he can't help but talk about the fact that obviously uh, the, the the world of Christian film and entertainment is. Right definitely on the rise yeah more money going into you know well good produced productions for uh the christian films right and christian shows like the chosen yep and that more money is going into it there's a demand for it now some yep. of the mainstream big studio box office yeah, you know, Lionsgate guys, people like that are starting to expand their faith offerings right they, they each yeah. now want to have like a little faith division yep and start creating content that's driven towards the faith 
faith-based families or faith-based folks or watchers. So. I, I, I agree. And then I, I think it's interesting. Now, this article in Newsweek, by the way, if you go read it and you go look it up in Newsweek, um, and it talks about Sound of Freedom kind of being the clarion call of, okay, this can really work for Hollywood, meaning they can make money. At right, it, right, exactly. But, it's a business decision. But it's still. a very long article. Yeah, it'll take you a uh, solid 20 minutes to read it. Yeah, it's it a, will. It's a it's, good It's very read, long, but, but it's, it's good and it's interesting in that, you know what, in part of this is the thought process of, you know what, Hollywood's doing this because they think they can make money, not because they've seen the light of Christ. However, I do think there is – a revolution of sorts going on, I think, in this country. And that is people need faith. Mm -hmm. it's, it's in who we are. And I think this push over the past 15 years away from faith is starting to reverse itself. And I think it's mainly because of the identification with Christ and the difference where, where Jesus, you know, when you spend some time understanding what Jesus was about, it's accountability. It is accountability. Okay, but it's also forgiveness and love and, and opening your arms to your, your fellow man in a way that we as humans don't always do that the right way. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, in holding that against people, holding that against people because or holding that against God, because we as humans screw it up is convenient and has been effective for 15 years. But I do believe that now more and more. Faith is seeing a resurgence because it's in the core of who we are. And ultimately, if you allow Christ and the life he lived to stand on its own, I think it will be something that more and more people will continue to gravitate toward. Well, and I think what's interesting is we're also seeing this, you know, pandemic of loneliness and this isolation and this um, judgment. Suicide rates are up across the board, no matter what age bracket you're part of. You're, you know, we have massive drug issues going on that, you know, have drugs always been around? Yes, they've always been around. Somebody, I think it was Greg Smalley that said, no, I mean, is that who it was? I can't remember. Some pastor said this, the drugs of the 60s were for people to be enlightened, and now the drugs of today are for escapism. Now, I don't yeah. know if there's truth in that, but because um, I've never— I think drugs have always been about escapism. Well, but. yeah, but, it, you know, they kind of thought back in the 60s as hippies, yeah. hey, I'm going to be enlightened if I smoke this or if I take this, and right. I'm going to see something different that I didn't see before. Um, I think it's right now it's definitely escapism, right? And then it just becomes addiction after that part. But I think— in, you know, and my I guess my hope is, and maybe this is just me being naive and wanting people to to recognize who Christ is and that how much your life can be brighter and happier and just just feeling more at peace when you have God. It doesn't mean your life's easier, and we've talked about that. It does not mean that everything's going to be smooth as you know can be when you have Christ, but it does mean when you have a level of faith in a, in a in a God that loves you and that has prepared a life for you and given you purpose. It gives you a sense of hope and not so much dark, not letting so much of the darkness come in. And there's a lot of dark in this world right now. And I think it's probably like, uh, I, you know, I'm kind of jumping ahead and giving a little tease for what Todd Cook says um, that's coming up on Thursday's show. But he says the darkness has always been here. We always have had the darkness. There's always been darkness on this planet. It's just that sometimes we get more self-aware of it now because social media puts it more out there. We have more access to information now than we ever have, and it does kind of start to take over. So I kind of hope that we're seeing this resurgence in entertainment that's lighter and more positive because people need that in their life. And they're looking for something that's the, the real deal. And so that's kind of my hope for it. I know that this, this writer doesn't really feel quite the same as I do, but we'll put the article in the show notes so people can actually go and read the article as well. If they'd like to. Okay. Yeah, we can absolutely do that. That's, on you, that's on you. I'm giving you that task, Mark. So yeah, you're welcome. I, I can see that. I like when you extend how much work I have to do. Well done. <laughs> yeah. uh, so we wrap with this. So this is on a lighter note with faith. So you, you showed me a video, which was absolutely hilarious so we're gonna oh run gosh. this now if you're listening to this you're still here it's fantastic and if you're listening to this you really should go to our youtube channel and make sure you watch this video because if yeah. you need a good laugh and I mean, i'm sorry to be poking fun at some church going choir people oh they're fan they're great are you kidding but it's no, like a Saturday this is incredibly kid. compelling to watch okay so so it's a group it's a uh it's two women and a guy mm -hmm. who end up dancing and singing a song and they're really, I mean, they're cutting edge stuff they're doing here. <laughs> the guy especially. So we'll start, uh, we'll play this. And then, but but when the guy starts going, I mean, he combines things like the moonwalk, yeah. the robot. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe, it's it's wild what he does. And he's fantastic. Yeah. 
and and, he, and there's a they, bit they of a, take themselves very he even seriously. has a little axel rose in him when oh, it, from sweet wow. child of mine yeah no i'm wow. t- the hips and everything like okay. the hips don't lie with this guy oh no and it's guy. fantastic so as we take a look just take a listen to this this is fantastic <laughs> They're all like perfectly choreographed too oh, for yeah. those people so who right can't now, see this. Yeah, right now it's pretty basic. Yeah, I it's mean, kind it's... of reminds me. I mean, I used to perform at Six Flags, so I remember the choreography okay. days where you had to match your partner right next to you. I mean, we got okay. the hand, the jazz hands. They're doing a little bit of the square, the little square box step. Yep. But this is when he breaks loose right here. Yeah. So, okay. Oh, a spin? Now he's doing a little bit of the robot here. <laughs> and the moonwalk, then everybody. Then the moonwalk. And then yes. he goes right into Axl Rose here in a second, <laughs> which is unbelievable because he gets the <laughs> hips. There it is. That's Axl Rose right there. Okay. Gosh. I mean, of... he's blending a lot of different. Di- I, and the question is, is how old is this? Oh, pretty old. I mean, I sent this to my brother and yeah. to my sister and a couple of my friends here in town, and they were dying. They're like, yeah. it's so cringy. I can't finish it. I, I mean, love that's. It. <laughs> But, and they but yeah, love Mark, it. I like, showed to Mark and Mark's like, let's put this in the show. No, because it's so they're this. into it. And they yeah. appre- and I appreciate people who go out there and let it rip. Yeah, I know. You know? You're big on you you love a good uh sing and sing and dance at the oh. church level. Yeah, you're big on that. Guy. Well, all right. I, I admit <laughs> that I'm not like Me. jumping in to sing at church. Yeah, and I am I admit. I, I know. do I do appreciate I a good worship band. So well, we you, differ on that. Yes, well you have you have a great voice. I do not. So well, you I, have a history of singing in church. <laughs> like actual performance, I have a history of sitting in the back and just praying that we get through the music section so we can have the message. <laughs> okay. um, but so, okay. So speaking of church, we will have da, cha, da, cha, Todd. Cha, cha, Todd Cook. Todd Cook. Todd, Todd Cook. Todd Cook. Yes. We'll have Todd on Thursday. Uh, great discussion with him about faith, uh, his journey to um, being someone who was really struggling in his teenage years to somebody who built a church here in Albuquerque and in New Mexico that is turned out to be a huge, huge benefit to the state. It's, it's great. Yeah. He does a really good job and um, we'll get more into that on Thursday's show. So for those of you that are listening today, thank you so much. Please make sure that you rate and subscribe our show on podcasts. Yes. And please hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. Yeah. YouTube channel. And yeah, if you can give us reviews on uh, Apple podcast or Spotify or whatever, we would appreciate that. Obviously tell your friends about it and we'll be back on Thursday. The latest edition of the No Doubt About It podcast. You've been listening to the No Doubt About It podcast. We hope you've enjoyed the show. We know we had a blast. Make sure to like, rate, and review. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at No Doubt About It podcast. No Doubt About It. The No Doubt About It podcast is a Choose Adventure Media production. See you next time on No Doubt About It. There is no doubt about it.